Matt here with Take Roads Less Traveled and I have had a few people ask me questions on this so today we are looking at the setup I have inside the avalanche for when I am on my trips and doing overlanding and <clears throat> this is actually a pretty big deal while you're on the road while you're driving you want to make sure that things are easily accessible that they're right within an arm's reach that you're not having to take your eyes off the road in order to be able to use these things and if you do have to take your eyes off the road that it is for the briefest of moments so uh, I try to make sure that I have everything set up that way and it's something that it's um, it's just important you don't want to be reckless you don't want to be careless because it's not only your life that's at stake but it's also the lives of others and their equipment as well and yours so it's something to, to really take into consideration when you set up your vehicle on how you have everything laid out as to where it's gonna be so that you can make sure it is in the best and safest area. So let's head inside the avalanche and take a look. So inside the avalanche for my setup, I have four key components. The first being a simple NATO mount. This is a magnetic mount for your phone and it just keeps it tucked down here, kind of out of the way, but still right within hand's reach for me. Now, I have my phone down here because I don't use my phone as my primary GPS. That is saved for my iPad, which I'll get to that in a second. The phone is simply for phone calls and for listening to music through the stereo. With phone calls, all I do is I just have it go straight to speaker, so I'm still hands-free. And eventually, this factory unit will get changed out for a Bluetooth one and then it'll be fully hands-free because it'll be automatically connected to through the stereo. So second aspect is communications on the trail. So I use currently a CB which I'd like to change out and upgrade but right now I have a CB unit it's just a little Cobra handheld unit and it just mounts right there. It's again it's right there within hands reach. It's real easy to grab and then I have the uh, all of the wiring and everything for that, the coax, all ran underneath the carpet to the back of the cab and then up through the rear sail panels that then attaches to the antenna on the roof. It's a pretty easy setup, very basic. The third aspect I have is a power inverter. And I have that on the side of the center console down here. I know you guys can't see it. It's just a real small power inverter uh, by Everstart. It's got two USB plugs and then one normal 12 volt plug in it. And it's just a great little extra bit of charging for phones, tablets, computers, what have you, alongside of the two 12 volts that I have already in the vehicle itself. So then the last aspect is what I use for GPS and that is my iPad. So it is a standard iPad, it doesn't have a GPS chip in it. So in order to have GPS, I have a Bad Elf GPS unit that plugs right into the lightning connection. And you can get it for both a lightning connection and for a micro USB. And then the charging cable, I can just run right down to the inverter and it will charge both the Bad Elf and the iPad together. As far as software, I tend to really enjoy using Gaia GPS. You can see here I have it up right now, and this shows where I am down in Portsmouth, Virginia. But all of these lines are routes and tracks that I've built into my account on Gaia. And what that does is that allows me to save all these routes so that while I'm driving along, it will track me as to where I'm at. And it lets me see very specifically where I'm wanting to go. So if I wanted to come out to here, uh, I can come out into Roanoke and you can see all the waypoints I've set building those tracks. But what's nice is Gaia uh, is a paid subscription, uh, but you can use it for free. However, to get some of the better features out of it, it's only $20 a year, which is not bad at all for a GPS subscription unit, especially when you can not only save your own routes and tracks, but you can download routes and tracks made by others and you can export them out to use through other files. So it's a really nice program to have. Again, everything's very simple, it's very basic, but it works for me. And I'm not saying that it's perfect, but again, functionality is the biggest thing. 
One thing that I really like, again, everything is within hands reach. I can very easily get hold of my communications, whether it be CB or phone. I have my GPS right here to be able to access and, and plot along with. And what really makes this possible is the mount that I have. Uh, you guys, I'm sure, have seen, and if you're looking at different mounts, Ram truck mounts is one of the biggest and most common mounts you'll see, but they tend to be a little expensive. They can be around $100 or so, and if you're on a budget, that can seem pretty tight when it comes to just a single part of what your setup is going to be for a mount for $100. So on Amazon, I purchased an Archon mount and you can see it's just tension loaded to hold the iPad in. It does a pretty good job of it. And all it is is just a solid aluminum rod that I have down to a base that is secured to the center console. And then you have your mount itself and you can move it around, you can tighten it, you can swivel it all you want and everything and tighten that down. And you do get a little bit of movement in it. Again, it's not as expensive as the Ram mounts. In fact, it's about a third of the price of a Ram mount. So you can't, can't go into that expecting 100% perfection on it so I'll just show you a little bit here so once I have this in here you can see there's still some movement there but it's not terrible and when you're on a rougher road if you're on a if you're on a forest service trail or you're just off the pavement you're gonna get some movement but you're moving around with it so it's not that bad and then on the road it tends to be really fine it's good and stable so this is just the basic setup I have and I hope it I hope it helps you guys just to see what you can do on a on a fairly easy cheap budget. Uh, I would say uh, aside from the tablet itself for the CB, the NATO mount, the Archon mount and for the power inverter, I'm in about $150 total and like I said that's the entire CB setup as well. That's the antenna, that's the radio, everything. So Again, about $150 to have the capability of mounting a GPS unit, having auxiliary power, having a place to securely put your phone where it's still in arm's reach and having communications while out on the trail. So I hope it helps, guys, and I look forward to hearing some feedback and what you guys think can improve or what you like or dislike about it. So look forward to get that feedback, and I'll see you in the next video.